Okay, so if you've read the title, you can see that it is a very new um, idea, video idea we've got going on today. This is obviously a part one. Um, I'm joined by Jabari. How are you doing, my friend? Yes, well, thanks for having me on. I'm good. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so it's obviously, you've obviously got the the pleasure of doing part one. Um, I think Sean's job's going to be a little bit easier with part two because he's going to have a little bit more context on some of these players. But um, what we're working on right now with the assumptions of, on this rebuild uh, is essentially what we're going to do. Um, we're working on the assumptions that Asensio and Nacho are leaving this summer. We're working on the same assumptions that Ceballos may leave, Lunin may leave. Uh, Furlong Mendy may, may leave. That's that's up to him for Furlong Mendy's departure. And then we're also working on the assumption that Hosselu is joining on a one-year loan and uh, Jude Bellingham has been signed for 100 million. Well, you know, obviously there's a bit of flexibility with that deal. Um, we've obviously also recently got the news that Karim Benzema is possibly um, leaving to Saudi Arabia, which we'll touch on that in a second. Um, and yeah, we, he's got 150 million uh, euros to spend um, on players. He can, he can obviously make that up in sales. So he's basically playing the role of Huni Khalifa and I'm and I'm playing the role of Flor Florentino Perez. I'm going to make the final decision, but he's going to recommend me some players and some sales for each and every position that he that he wants to that he deems you know that needs an upgrade or just needs some freshening up. So. Um, I mean, we've got to start with Karim Benzema because that is obviously the most recent news. Um, he's obviously, it looks like he's, he's bordering on a deal to al Hittihad in, in, in Saudi Arabia. I mean, in terms of sudden news, this is, this is absolutely bonkers because this has just come out of absolutely nowhere, nowhere in the last few days. And to say that we're prepared for this, this is not this is not something that Real Madrid have been prepared for. We've we've kind of been in the assumption that Benzema would be here for a, maybe two more years, and then and then obviously Endrick would come. And with the problem was we were looking for a striker to feed into those years between Benzema and Endrick. However, now suddenly it looks like Benzema is going to go to Saudi Arabia, and I don't blame him. I can't blame him. You know what is it, 400 or 200 million for two years? I mean, that's that's an incredible wage. And he, if he's going to go and go get that bag, fair enough. You know, it's just, it's an, it's an incredible wage to be earning at his age. So you can't really, you know, you can't really look at him in a different way if he, if he goes ahead and takes that deal. Um, but in terms of us, this is this is sudden. The, the options on the market is very limited. I, I looked at quite a few players, but, you know, they're, there really wasn't much that was available that you know fit the profile that we needed. So, what are your thoughts on this on this Benzema uh, Benzema deal? Yeah, it's it's. I would say it's very disappointing, bro, because of how because for me, I was planning Benzema in our squad for next season already. So for him to leave now, it will it will definitely shock me and shock the fan base and the, the club has to react. To this, you know, we can't sit around and we can't wait for entry next season because we have a season to play next season as well. So we need to replace him and replace him Benzema. It's not just about replacing his goals, replacing his assists, but also his leadership on the pitch as well. So we need to sign players to be able to do that competently. Yeah, and and in terms of that overall package, you know, all everything that he brings to the team. It doesn't have to come through with just the striker. You can you can maybe change the midfield uh, dynamic to to fit that. But you know, in terms of the striker role, this is practically impossible to replace. I think there's one man who we're going to get onto later who I think is best suited to replace that. But um, yeah, it, it's looking difficult. So let's start with um, the goalkeeper. Now it's been rumored that Andrew Lunin is going to leave this summer for fifteen million. I think would be a good price. I think he should have left in in January. Ajax or it was it last summer? He Ajax wanted him um, as their keeper when uh, when Andre Onana left. I think that would have been a good deal for him. I think that would have been a smart deal for him. I think we have to sell him this summer. I think that would be beneficial for his career. Fifteen million with a buyback clause would be a smart deal for us to make. He's not going to get playing time next season, so I think uh, Andrew Lunin leaves. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree with you. I think that this is the best option for his career, although selfishly, I would love him to stay at Real Madrid because he's a very good backup and a very good prospect. But I think that to get the best out of his ability and to enhance his career and ultimately um, price and, and career goals, 
I think that the best move for him is away from Real Madrid. Yeah, so who have you gone for to replace uh, Andrew Dunning? That was so, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously free transfer this summer, Castilla Prosper uh, graduate as well. You know, it's 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 just simple, isn't it? It's simple, and you know, he's a he's a quality keeper as well. So, yeah, uh, I think that's that's a simple enough deal uh, to make. Um, then I think should we start with the right back or the left back? Left back. Okay, okay. So in terms of that, did you have you sold for or Mendy then? Yeah, I've sold Mendy. Yeah, okay. So, in terms of that, I would say we probably get 25 to 40 million. I'm going to undervalue just to make sure that, you know, we aren't just going to for a career mode, a career mode save here. So, I'm going to undervalue. I'm going to say uh, sell it for 25 million. So, who have you gone for to replace Follow Mendy at left back? Alfonso Davies. Yeah, so what do you see in Alfonso Davies to, to really help this team? I think that primarily, I think that he's always a guy. Um, we've seen him play in the attack for Canada. We've seen him play left wing back, left back, even right wing at times. So primarily, with his versatility, but also we need a left back. We need a world class left back and to really help finish us out on the left flank. So and he's very we we know Davies. His pace is very powerful, tenacious. You know, couldn't want for one duels and. He's also very decent in the final third as well, so I, I'd love if he's at the club. Yeah, um, I mean, in my mind, there's no doubt if Alfonso Davis is available, you sell for a lot of money to get him. I think is the upside on having Davies and Vinicius Jr. on, on a left wing is, oh, is just is frightening. It's genuinely frightening. But my issue with this is obviously availability. And um, in terms of that, we've got to look at the fact that Alfonso Davies, he, he plays for Bayern. He's he's happy at Bayern as well. I think I think he'll be quite happy at Bayern to remain there at Bayern. And Bayern's you know willingness to sell. We're gonna say possibly how much? How much would you expect to buy him for? Um, se- around seventy, seventy to eighty oh, minimum. Okay. I'm I'm not so sure. I think Bayern at this point. Uh, how many? I think he's got a couple. He's got quite a few years left on that on that deal. I don't think Bayern are in a position where they would want to sell him. So I think it would cost maybe above 90, which for a left back, I think it's quite steep. Um, I think it's not, it's not, if if we can do get that deal done, I think we have to. I think that's, that's fair enough. So I'll, I'll make the decision at the end to, to sign Davies or not. But um, yeah, I think you, you're right. If if we sign Davies, it's, it's just... Overall, you know, even defensively, you know, people will say that he's, he's defensively not not as good as as he as he is when going forward. But he's still a very very good defender, you know, especially in recovery runs. You know, getting back and you know using that lightning quick sp- speed to get back and make that recovery. He's so good at that. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll make the decision on the end based on based on financial um, issues. I'll, I'll I will go maybe like. Uh, I'll go a little bit over the budget if if we need to to sign stretch that budget a little bit more. But um, if we go on to on the other side, um, we've obviously got Danny Carvajal, um, Lucas Vasquez there. Um, that's obviously a, a main point why we aren't signing a right back is that they in their mind we've got two competent right backs and that's what they are. They are competent right backs. Danny Carvajal can put in good performances. Uh, Lucas Vasquez can put in good performances from time to time. So, have you signed a right back here? Nah, I have um, neglected your right back position due to DVs. His, his price, it was too expensive for me to sign another right back too. Yeah, I think I agree. I think if we are going to sign Davies, that 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 does say we are not going to sign a right back. However, I have got some options here for you if, for the for the listeners. Um, I've got Diogo Dallo, obviously, recently he's, he's going to sign a, a contract extension with Manchester United, so that probably does rule that option out. Juan Foyth, 40 million would cost, um, I think that's a bit too much for a defensive right back. Um, Arnold Martinez, he's a good quality player, he's been really good for Hirona this season, 25 million. And then probably the one where I would say, if you want a stopgap this season, if you want a guy to help us in the league this season, then I think uh, Benjamin Pavard would be a, a good signing at right back. But um, yeah, I think, yeah, like like you said, if we are going to sign Alfonso Davies, then that, that leaves us with no ability to sign a right back. So 
I agree with you. Um, in terms of the midfield, obviously Danny Ceballos um, is likely to leave. We don't. We're not hundred percent sure. Um, and then obviously in the in there as well, uh, Luka Modric's future is a bit in doubt suddenly out of um, Saudi Arabia once again, uh, which is a bit annoying. But um, what, what what have you gone for in midfield? Have you got anything in midfield? Uh, obviously we've got Bellingham coming in. Not only um, Bellingham, only Bellingham hasn't bought anyone else in midfield other than, well, obviously Bellingham. Yeah, okay. So, um, what are your thoughts on that Bellingham deal? Obviously, 100 million. Um, we, we, I would like to hear your thoughts because I haven't heard them on Bellingham. Yeah, quality player. Um, obviously, we are um, overpaying for him because we know why, you know, he's, he's very young and, he, and he's English as well. So, we, 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 we always, any club who is going to sign him would have always overpaid for him, but I think that he's a quality youngster. Um, I think that he has the right personality, the right mindset to play for Real Madrid first and foremost because that is a very important factor in being a Real Madrid player and a Real Madrid youngster having that personality and pride for the badge. And as well, he's a quality player. Don't take anything away from his quality with the ball at his feet. His football and IQ, you know, his ability and his application of his quality. You know, he applies his quality on a consistent basis. Um, he's young, so he will have bad games naturally, like we saw against Chelsea in the Champions League. But as you saw, how many World Cup he turned up in big games. So how many for Dortmund in the league title run turned up in big games as well. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm very pleased with the signing and happy that he's he's, he's hopefully signing for Real Madrid soon. Yeah, and in terms of his role, what, what do you think his role can be in terms of playing time? But not only playing time, but the position that he plays in. You know, what what do you think? would get the best out of him and get the best out of the team for having him in the team. And I fans eat for me because I don't, I don't see him as a DM in particular, like Kamavinga or Shua made that more defensive or I see him as a box to box midfielder like Ferry, you know, probably off the left side because he prefers to cut in on his right for so although he does drive with the ball very well from the right hand side of midfield, but I think that he's more dynamic when he playing off the left of the midfield. So I think that a box to box slash number eight. Would, would, would be suitable. Yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously Modric and Kroos are, are going to tone down their minutes next season. How much, what would you be, what would your, your starting three be next season? Because obviously we haven't seen what Shuamani's form is going to be like, but in terms of, if you were to select a starting three for the first game in, uh, of La Liga next season, what would you go for? So, I'm sure many and Kamavinga yeah. must start in our midfield next season. Meaning for the for the majority of the games, obviously Madrid and Cruz would start some classicals, would start at any Madrid derbies. But for me, in for large parts of the season, I want to see Shaw many and Kamavinga on in the midfield. Only for, one of the first names on the team sheet, and then we could accompany them by obviously we have the luxury of Bellingham, Madrid, Cruz, possibly Ceballos, and we can't forget Freddy who is always consistent for us. So for me, Shaw many. Kamavinga and either one of Modric or Cruz. Okay, yeah, I, I agree. I think for me, I would go for depending on Shomeni's form. Obviously, I think yeah, I think he'll grow into the starting lineup uh, across the season. So I would I would personally start with uh, I was it I would start with um, Kamavinga. Then I would go for uh, Tony Cross and then and then Jude Bellingham. I think Bellingham might miss the first few games due to that knee surgery, um, which is a bit concerning, but. Considering the fact that we have got other midfielders, we can obviously tone down his playing time, which he hasn't been able to do at Borussia Dortmund and previously to that Birmingham as well. So um, I'm not too too overly concerned about that because I think we've got quality midfield options that can allow him rest throughout the season, where he whereas he can't during the Dortmund season or Birmingham season. So ultimately, I think, yeah, I, I'm not too concerned about Bellingham's injury issues. Um I, th- I think um, also uh, of that Modric deal. Now we've got to talk about that as well because that's come up this this morning, yesterday night as well. It's come up uh, that Modric is also considering a move to Saudi Arabia. I don't like how Saudi Arabia just suddenly just nicking all all the top uh, talent from us. But um, yeah, I think 
if if Modric goes, I don't think it will be as much of a miss as Karim Benzema. I think it will still be a miss because have losing that type of leader, losing that type of creativity, losing that uh, that that skill set in midfield is always going to hurt you. But I think Luka Modric at, at his age, he's going to tone it down in, over the few next few years. I think it's it's practically it's guaranteed. We have to plan a future without him, and I think. It's it's impossible that we can play Modric and Kroos in the midfield again now. I think it's it's time. It's time. It's time for us to switch now. Uh, next season has to be it. I think this season should have been it, but I think next season has to be it. I think Carlo Ancelotti has to realise that as well. Um, but, you know, if Modric leaves, I mean, what a legacy he leaves behind. It's been fantastic. Uh, how long has it been? 11 years? 11 years has been fantastic, non-stop, consistent, brilliant every single game every big game he's been brilliant in and he's you know losing that kind of that kind of ability in big games losing that kind of just ability to step up in big games losing that leadership in big games it's 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 obviously going to hurt us but you know I think at the end of the day we have to realize that you know we have to transition at some point so what are your thoughts on Modric? Yes, but I agree with everything that you said basically because even evidently we've seen it this season with Modric. You know, he's turned up against Liverpool at Anfield, he's turned up against City at the Bernabeu, not necessarily second leg. But also on the con- on the flip side of that, we saw him against City at the Etihad and he got completely run over by the likes of Gondaga and Bernardo Silva. So, I mean, age obviously plays a tool, but for me, we always have to plan a future without much return crews. And I think that we need to start doing it next season because the sooner we do it, the sooner. Well, the sooner we do it, the better it will be for us in the in the future, in the near future and in the future because obviously they're leaving us. At some point in time, whether it be this season or next season, if both of us, or the both of them are leaving our midfield. So our youngsters have to learn to transition, have to learn to play, to control games. And obviously, yeah, but Modric... Take nothing away from this. Take nothing away from his legacy. This season doesn't take anything away from his legacy, from his impact on the club, because he's one of the best midfielders, or possibly even the best midfielder to grace the Bernabeu pitch on a consistent basis. And he leave, he, his legacy is set that Real Madrid, so there's nothing to worry about his legacy. But I, I agree with everything I said. We need to consider moving on and planning without him. Yeah, um, and in terms of another midfielder coming in, I said about Ceballos leaving. Um, in terms of your your opinion, what, what what would you say about Ceballos leaving? And you know, uh, I think this weekend is obviously last last um, match day in in La Liga. Celta Vigo are are very close to relegation. So suddenly, you know, they were tenth a couple of weeks ago. I don't know how it's got to this position where they're just like I think they're one point ahead of uh, ahead of Valladolid um, in the relegation zone. So. If if Celta Vigo go down, there is a very very good chance that Gabriel Vega leaves, and Gabriel Vega leaves for a cheap price. Uh, if you're saying, would you would you rather keep um, Dani Sabas, and you know, bearing in mind that Modric's future, would you keep uh, Dani Sabas, and and would you buy um, Gabriel Vega for let's say twenty million? Would you loan him back to Sevilla Celta? So, what are your thoughts on on Gabriel Vega, and you know, maybe that price tag as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's a good player. I think that, he, well, he was linked to us really any season and I think that we spoke about him during the Club World Cup and something like that. But yeah, I like the player, but I don't think that I personally would sign him over keeping Sebaios because I think that even though he's younger, even though he possibly has a higher ceiling than Sebaios, I think that Sebaios is pleased to do his role that he's doing right now. Play for us, and although he wants to start, everyone wants to play football on a consistent basis. But I think that's about, I, I trust Sabayos more to come off the bench against a, a, a mid-table La Liga team, or even start possibly against a La Liga team compared to Gabriel Vega, who is young still. We have to remember, and you know he, he needs minutes to minutes to develop as well. So I think that I would prefer to keep Sabayos over signing Vega in this context. Yeah, um, I I would agree with you. I think um, Ceballos is obviously a better player than Gabriel Vega at this current moment. However, if it was down to it, I think we I, sh- I think we should sign the Gabriel Vega next. I think we should sign him this summer and then loan him back 
elsewhere. If Celta stay up, obviously that's where he, you should loan him back to. Um, I think he, having him there in a couple of seasons time, Gabri Vega's skill set is completely unique uh, to compare to other other Spanish central midfielders. He's an excellent goal scorer. He gets himself into really good positions. That's not normal for normal for some midfielders. He's just you know having that ability to switch things up. I think in a couple of seasons time when we won't have uh, Luka Modric or Tony Kroos, we're gonna have to switch things up, try something different. And I think Gabri Vega would help us with that. So I think. It would be a smart signing if we were to put sign Gabriel Vega somewhere and then load him back somewhere else because, uh, you know, I think not only that, but Danny Sabayas' future is not down to us, I don't think. I think it is down to Danny Sabayas himself. And, you know, as a result, I would, I would, uh, I would say that we would, we should, we should, we should be start planning for, for the future because Danny Sabayas is. He could he could go elsewhere and he could find a, a good role elsewhere. You know, I, I think Wolves have been linked with him. Aston Villa have been linked with him. That would be good moves for him because he would he would be a, a star player there. So for me, I, I would I would sign Gabriel Vega because I think he just offers us something completely different that not any not other other mid central midfielders offer. So um, yeah, I think that would be, well, that's what I've got to say about uh, Gabriel Vega. But. Um, we move backwards because I forgot to completely address uh, the centre back uh, problem as well. With natural natural leaving, I don't think it's is a is a is a priority right now. But obviously, natural has been a, such a good servant for us. What would you do to replace natural? Because obviously, Vallejo is obviously the 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 ideal replace. I I wouldn't say ideal actually. I, I'm not going to say ideal, but. He's obviously the natural replacement for Nacho because he, he can play left-back, he can play right-back, he can play centre-back. And he's not really made a fuss. I think we've got the natural replacement there. I think I've been disappointed that Carlo Ancelotti has not given Vallejo some minutes con considering the fact that all the games left have been dead rubbers and I would like to see what Vallejo can bring to the team. But, um, you know, I, I, like I said, Pavard can play centre-back as well. So that's that's also an, another um, option for us. What are your thoughts on Nacho leaving and, you know, how can we replace Nacho? Because he's been obviously been such a fantastic servant and I would like, to him, look, would like him to stay. But like with Asensio and Ceballos, I think they can all have greater contributions elsewhere and become star players elsewhere. So what are your thoughts on Nacho leaving? Yeah, I have no problems with natural leaving because I think that if, if anyone deserves minutes, if anyone deserves to play more consistent game time in our squad, it's Nacho Fernandez because whenever he's called upon, despite the, despite the scenario, despite the circumstance, it could be a Copa del Rey from the 16 game away to the 13 or against Man City at the going about, as we saw last season, he always gives his all, he always is consistent and he deserves to, to, to make whatever decision he wants because I think that he's a quality centre back and wherever he goes he definitely start well I mean it's about Inter and I think that he'll start for Inter you know obviously with Skriniar even um, for PhD I think that he go there and he'll fit right in at Inter he, um, he's a front foot he defends on the front foot and he's, he's similar and he's what they um they need right now. So, yeah, I think that, well, although I, I'd like him to stay, but I have no problem with him even because he's a loyal servant and he deserves to choose his, his, his next step for the future. Yeah, and, you know, we have, we have to allow him that. And I think Rome is a good club for that. You know, we do allow our players to decide their future. You know, just look at Casemiro last summer. Um, but um, if we move ourselves back to the attack now, I think this is a very difficult situation for us. As things stand, our attackers for the next season are going to be uh, Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, Hazard and Hossolu. Um, first of all, I'd like to get your thoughts about Hossolu's one-year loan. Personally, I, I really... I, I don't mind. I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind about Hossolu um, signing for us. I think he's... He's a he's a good player. He's scored what sixteen goals in La Liga this season for relegated Espanyol. Um, in terms of his size, he's really tall. So if we want to swing him on last minute in the in the in the final minutes of, of a game, we can do that. We can do that one hundred percent. And um, I think 
personally, I think I really like this deal. I think a one-year loan, as a Mariano replacement, is cheaper than Mariano. He's not going to cost a transfer fee. I don't see the, the downside to having Hosolu in there. The only downside I can see is that we don't sign a, another striker. So if we go into next season with, with Hosolu, Vinicius, Rodrigo up, up front, uh, um, that, that would be... Um, that would be interesting, to say the least. But what are your thoughts on Hosodu? Yeah, he definitely yeah, an upgrade on Mariano. I mean, that's not, that's not really a difficult thing to do or to be, but we have to respect, as you said, 16 goals in the league for relegated Espanyol. Um, he even scored against us at the Bernabeu. Um, scored against Barca at the Camp Nou penalty. I think to draw the game, or even to win, I can't remember, I think it's to draw the game. Um, but yeah, he's a proven goal scorer, an upgrade on Mariano. Um, plan B, get those crosses into the box for somebody who will attack them um, and win headers and make the ball stick up top. And yeah, I mean, there's really nothing, it's, it's basically a win-win situation, you can't lose anything from this deal. So it's a, it's a, it's a good piece of investment from the, from the club. Yeah, I know. People will look at it and, and they will laugh because I I live in England and I know I know how much he is ridiculed over here because of his loan, uh, his deal to Newcastle where he was just he was shocking. But you know he's he's a solid La Liga striker and he's and he's and he's been doing it for a couple of years now. Where he's been where he's been consistent. He's scoring goals. He's he's good in the air and I think I just don't see any anything bad about it. He's thirty three, which. I don't really care to be honest. If he's still scoring goals, I don't really care if he's thirty three or not. So um, we've got to talk about that front three though. Now Vinicius is obviously guaranteed, and Rodrigo's guaranteed next next season as starters because those two are now just they're so beyond it. They they they're just so beyond any other attacker that we could feasibly buy buy in the in the, in the summer transfer window. So these two are are staying. They they're not going anywhere. However, Asensio is leaving. Now, people, some people I've seen um, have said that this is a good deal for us. We're, we're letting go of Asensio. He's, he's been bad for the club. However, I really think this is this is really harmful because Asensio scoring 10 to 15 league goals a season and those are those aren't just, you know, dead rubber goals where, they, where we're winning 3-0 already. These are sometimes, you know, clutch goals. We saw that against Etafe this season. Last season, he scored a couple long shots to, to save us some points and, you know, ultimately win us the league. This is a huge loss for us. And considering the lack of depth we already had, we were looking for an attacker anyway um, without Asensio. Now we've, we're have we really in the mud in terms of this 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 right wing option because we need a guy there who can score goals now. I don't really care about performances right now because we've got Rodrigo there for, to do that. I just need a goal a guy to, to score us 10 to 15 goals a season consistently and I don't really care who that is. So what, what are your thoughts on that right wing position and, you know, a sense you're leaving and who would you get to replace him? A sense you guarantees us 10 to 15 G minimum each season he guarantees us three and that is very hard to find on the market especially for somebody who's willing to sit on the bench and fight for their place so people people seem that it's a good deal for us a sense your performances was was average during the season and fair enough some of them where he goes he's, he goes boasting in, in games in a lot of games actually but we must remember how many times has he won us games with those long range shots? How many times has he has he pulled us back into games with a with a drive into the into the box and then a finish into the bottom left corner or a cross into the box of Benzema or someone? You know, so we have so we have to take these things into consideration when we're talking about Asensio and his impact on the team. And I, I think that this is this can hurt us if if we don't competently replace Asensio. If, if we do replace him, fair enough, but. We need someone to replace his contributions because if we don't, we'll struggle. Yeah, and um, in terms of signing that player, finding that player, it's really difficult. There is it's limited options on the market. I found I found three options here. Um, there is no um, DRB, and I'll speak about why in a second. But who have you gone for? Um, had to replace Asensio and you know provide us options and on the right wing. I want for Angel Di Maria. Okay, yeah, that was one of my options. You, what are your thoughts on Di Maria? I think that they're very similar. Um, 
we can drive with the ball um with the big game players as well scored in finals um and they can shoot the football from a long range to win their games and i think that the mary also guarantees you the similar amount of three as a sense yeah and you just yeah you just completely yeah, you can continue. it's a shrewd sign in you yeah i mean just free free signing this summer we know that we we won't sign any a big name player um, unless it's uh, a play we're going to talk about later on, but um, we won't sign a big name old uh, old uh, player for a big price. Uh, we're going to sign these freebies, and I think with Di Maria, we know the assurances. We've seen him at the Bernabeu before. He he was just so good at the Bernabeu, and you know when he left for Manchester United, it was just it it felt like it was just it shouldn't have happened. It felt like it shouldn't have happened at all because Di Maria was. He was. He should have been happy at Real Madrid, and you know, it just seemed like we were forcing him out the door for a, for the hottest new thing on the block, which is James Rodriguez, and you know, we just completely forgotten about what he did for us in in thirteen fourteen. I think this return back to the Bernabeu would be fantastic for him. He's still contributing for Juventus, um, although he's been injured. Um, I think, like you said, he's he's plays in a similar way. He gets cuts inside, scores goals, provides assists. I think uh, my uh, Angel Di Maria is perfect for this. Uh, for this as a free free agent. Um, the other options I've gone for, um, listen, th- these aren't exactly the most beautiful options. They aren't exactly the most reputable players, but you know they'll get the job done in my opinion. Pedro Gonzalez uh, of Sporting. Uh, I think he would cost too much, which is the sticking point I would have for Gonzalez, but. Um, 20 goals this season, 15 goals last season, 23 goals in his first season for Sporting. He's he's an absolute menace. He scores so many goals for for Sporting. Um, and then the player after that is um, I've gone for Ocampos as well. I think uh, Ocampos is is cheap. He provides a threat, a spark, and he scores goals. So, um, yeah. What are your thoughts on on these players? Yeah, I mean Ocampos. Yeah, I've always liked Ocampos. I think that. He's very direct when I think about him, you know, right footed, right winger. Um very direct. Drives he's not is not afraid to take on his full back and yeah, he's fearless when he when he when he when he when he's when the ball is at his feet. So I think that, that that's that's a good option as well. And Concal the um the first full game I watched of him actually was against Arsenal in the Europa League and I was very impressed with him from minute one. Um with the ball at his feet. Magic magical. Um and he's a very smart player as well. I mean, I didn't know he had, he, I didn't know he had so many um a GA. So that's interesting. But no, it's not. It's not GA. Yeah, it's just goals. Like, it's just goals. They aren't. Just, oh, goals. Yeah, they're not good. GA. Yeah. They're not both. Oh, fine. Yeah, fine enough. Fine enough. Well, yeah, good player. Yeah. Yeah, obviously a winger as well. He can play central midfield. So. There's a lot that uh, Gonzalez can do, but I think he's going to cost too much. Sixty million. I think ideally he would be perfect for us, but he's, he's just too much money, I think. So, Ocampos, I agree, Di Maria would be the best option here. 34 years old, but he's still he's still fantastic. He's still absolutely fantastic. And then we've got to finish with the last player, and that's replacing Karim Benzema. Before, we thought this was going to be back up to Benzema, but suddenly we're talking about the replacing Benzema, and this has come out of nowhere, but... Like we said, there's, there's, there's. This is the most difficult thing in football to replace Karim Benzema, um, and I think just replacing everything. I think there's only one man, and I'm gonna say his name. And that's Harry Kane. Harry Kane is the only man in world football I think that can suitably replace Benzema for the play style for everything that comes with the goals. I think Harry Kane's what seventy to hundred million, one year left on the contract. He's obviously the the England English uh, English star man, um, and he, he's just he is he is the model professional. He I don't think you know the injury concerns. I I think you just have to do it now. There's 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 no option. You've left yourself with no option. I think you have to pull the trigger on Harry Kane. Uh, I know you've got a different option for this, um, but I think Harry Kane is just. You have to do it, considering the fact he would also line up perfectly with when Endrick would come in as well. I think, um, I think Harry Kane's career trajectory would be perfect for that as well. I think, I just got to say, it, I think Harry Kane's got to be it. It has to be done this summer. It has, it has to be. I don't care if it costs seventy. I don't care if it costs hundred million. I think 
if you are going to get this done, if you're going to match Benzema's output, it has to be via Harry Kane. So what are your thoughts on Harry Kane or uh, other alternatives to Karim Benzema? Yeah, but I, I, just, I just have one question to ask you before um, I give my thoughts. What, what's the most you will pay for Harry Kane at the maximum? I mean, I think with Spurs, it's... They've, they've obviously, they're in a bad position with Harry Kane. He's got a year left. Harry Kane has to win some trophies soon enough. He, we have the leverage. We should have the leverage over, over Daniel Levy and Spurs in this, in this instance. And the fact is that they would rather sell to a foreign club than to sell to Manchester United, to be, to be, um, to be honest. So I think I would personally say, Ninety million is the absolutely most we 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 could pay for Harry Kane. I think. I think we could get him down to that though. I think it's fairly simple if we could get him down to that because he he has to. I don't think I don't see him forcing his way up Spurs. That's the only problem. I don't think I think he has too much respect for Spurs to to do that. Unfortunately, to to just completely throw his toys out of the pram. But personally, I think he he has to he has to find a way out this summer. And I think Real Madrid is the perfect perfect destination for him and I think it's per- perfect for Real Madrid as well if if oh and we've got to stress if Karim Benzema leaves it's still an if but yeah um what give you give us your first option then uh for for the striker role yeah I mean in, a, in an ideal world and I mean ideal absolutely ideal world I'll have Ricky in a heartbeat you know direct replacement for Benzema similar but Similar types of players, I think that Benzema is a better overall footballer, but Keane still has the link play, still has the, the assist as well to his game. And obviously the goals is undeniable. Also, one last and thing, would... 30 goals this season for the Spurs. I mean, that, that says enough yeah. in that Spurs yeah. team. That doesn't create Quality. anything. Yeah. In the Prem 2, 38 game season. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's crazy. So, when, as I said, in, in an perfectly ideal world, and I'd add have Harry Kane, but I think that he's too embedded into England and breaking that that record to persuade him to leave. I mean, we are Real Madrid, we are the biggest club in the world, obviously, but I think that Harry Kane is too embedded into the English culture and want and his desire to break the record for us to take him away from school. So I, I don't know what's your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's decision it. time. It will tell us a lot about Harry Kane if he if he wants to win trophies with Real Madrid or stay in England, I mean, he could still win trophies with, with Spurs. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then he could obviously win trophies with Manchester United. But, you know, it's guaranteed at Real Madrid that you're going to win trophies. So, you know, it's it's decision time for Harry Kane. So, yeah, that's my opinion on that. Yeah. And well, my option, as you said, as I have one for is I have one for Colomuani. I really, I'm really... I really like the player. I think that he's very, very explosive. Um, he, he doesn't give us the centre back to rest. He, he's always looking to run in behind. And obviously, there's the conversation about the Bundesliga and the space that. Yeah, I've got, I've got two words for you, and that's Luka Jovic. Mm, uh, that's some food for thought because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think I would look at Jovic. I was only thinking about Colomani yeah. in this in this situation. But that's some food for thought. But I think that Colomani is better. And look at you, which and I think that he's he's proven it on a more consistent basis and on a bigger stage as well, as we saw in the World Cup, so many World Cup final. Although he missed the one v one and fair enough, it happens. But we saw him come on, we saw him play with Mbappe and the likes and, and do well and, 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 and look a threat always. And even for Lever we saw him again. Um Frankfurt, sorry, um saw him against Bayern. Score, score against them a quality finish he beat up a man corner completely just put, and put the ball past the goalkeeper and yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm in awe of this player and I think that I, I would love him at the club I would love him at the club yeah um, I mean I'm going to throw the same question that you threw at me how much would you pay for Carlo Mani because Frankfurt are not going to be they're not going to be <laughs> they're going to ask for quite a lot for Carlo Mani so what would you pay for him Maximum, the maximum I would pay for him. Yeah, yeah. Maximum. I'd say 75 maximum. Oh, I don't think, I think 
considering the fact Bayern are also in that race, I think Frankfurt could ask for 100 million and I think they would get 100 million from Bayern. Bayern are desperate this summer. They are desperate for a striker. I think Bayern would pay that 100 million uh, in an instant. And that's that's another reason. I mean, like I said, Luka Jovic does obviously. I think he is a better player than Jovic and I think he fits better, better than Luka Jovic that I did. But... It still haunts me to this day about that transfer. Sixty million we paid for Jovic, and it never, he never clicked, never ever clicked. And Kolomania, as much as he's been great, it's been his first season, uh, you know, first outstanding season as a professional at age what, age twenty four. It does scare me a little bit that this is, this is what if we if we were to sign him that that that's what would happen. You know, a hundred million to pay for Kolomania would be a bit too much, and I, I think. Yeah, I agree. Seventy five million. I think that would be a, a a good deal, a good deal. But I think it's just a bit too much um, for Colomani. I think it does scare me. There's too much risk about about this transfer, and also you got to to ask yourself as well. I mean, is is striker the best role for Colomani because he he does like playing on the wing, and I do think that he he can offer some threat, more threat on the wing as well. And therefore, I mean that might that might prove useful in a couple of years' time when Endrick does come or Haaland may come or uh, Mbappe comes, where where Colomani can play on the on the wings. But it does scare me a little bit about Colomani. So yeah, I mean, I I would I would personally go for Harry Kane over Colomani. I think I think that's a no brainer. But I've got some other options for you. Um, just would you would you like Roberto Firmino as striker? Uh, obviously free, brilliant for Liverpool over the last few years. What are your thoughts on Firmino? Yeah, I mean I take him, but not not to lead the Real Madrid starting, be the, be, not not to be sir the Real Madrid starting number nine and, and for for a consistent season. I think that his his best years are behind him, and we we need we need better than that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, as a starter, yeah, I I agree. It just can't happen. Um, then after that, um, I think Lautaro would be a, a Lautaro Martinez would be a good signing, considering the fact that it would cost fifty to sixty million. Because Inter Milan, let me stress this: Inter Milan need to sell players this summer. They need to because they're they're in massive massive financial problems, and they're going to lose Skriniar for free. They're going to lose De Vrij for free. These two are a big big pass. They need they need to sell players, and Lautaro could be an easy way to make good money. And I think. Fifty to sixty million for Lautaro is an absolute steal, considering the fact he can play in a two. He can play it on his own. He's good, very good hold up player. He's a really, really, really hard worker. He just keeps running constantly, and you know, at points, you know, his finishing is fantastic. But also that inconsistency does scare me a little bit with with Lautaro. The fact that he's just he is a very inconsistent player when he when he's when he's bad he's bad he's very bad but when he's good he's also very very good so what are your thoughts on Lautaro yeah quality player i think now one thing that goes on notice with Lautaro is his, is his, his intelligence of the ball the way he attacks space the way he maneuvers and he operates in between defenders and when he, and when he, he knows how to time his runs Towards the ball and away from the ball, and, and, and I really like Lautaro. I think uh, he's a quality player, and I'd actually prefer him over Firmino as a starting striker. Backup, possibly we could have a conversation about Firmino and Lautaro, but as a starting striker in 2023, I'd take Lautaro yeah. over Firmino. Yeah, and especially that price, at that price point, I would definitely, if Kane doesn't go well, I think Lautaro would be. A very very high on my high on my radar, and then the last one I've got is also um, Paulo Dybala. I he's got a thirteen million pound release clause, thirty million euro release clause. Sorry, um, that's incredibly cheap for such a good player. He can play as the number ten, can play as a striker, can play on the right wing. He's extremely versatile. He's extre- you know you saw his his incredible individual individual ability yesterday in the Europa League final which Roma unfortunately lost but um we've seen that he can just he can turn it on at any moment he's been fantastic for Roma you know this has been his best season since probably 17-18 he's been so good this season under Jose Mourinho he's been the main man at Roma I think the baller for 13 million is an absolute steal and I don't think I don't know how other clubs aren't looking at Paolo to the baller. so what are your thoughts on Paolo de baller? Yeah, big game player, big game player, um, quality player as well. 
and Kante that away from him. As, and as you said, he was he was very good this season, one of his best seasons since t- since probably that seventeen eighteen um season for Juventus and Allegri. So, but would I take him at Real Madrid? To, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would, I would, yeah, but not not necessarily to start to be the starting striker. Yeah, because I don't view him as a striker ideally. So, yeah. Yeah, I think we will have to revolutionise if we don't get Harry Kane. I think we're going to have to change up this, the style of play because we're going to have to look at different players. So, um, well, it's time for some decisions to be made. Obviously, in goal, uh, David Soria, that's for free, so nothing, no impact on the on the transfer budget. Left-back, I agree with you. I think um, at this point now, considering the fact that we didn't buy any other players, I think, yeah, no, Alfonso Davies for 90 million is completely fine. I would 100% agree with you there. And obviously, Furlong Mendy sold for 25, so that that is um, 65 million uh, deficit on the on the on the transfer budget. Um, then that means 85 million left to sign Harry Kane. So for me, I would think that would be the optimum. We've obviously got space then also to sign Bonjaman Pavard, and I think that would be a perfect summer for us. This summer, if we were to sign, um, if we were to sign Harry Kane, uh, Di Maria, uh, Benjamin Pavard, uh, Alfonso Davies, and David Soria uh, as as my main players, and just before we close out as well, uh, Ancelotti, stay or go? It's a difficult. It's a difficult question. It's a very difficult question. But for me, I'd give him one more season personally. I'd yeah. give him one more season, yeah. Yeah, and who would you get to replace him in a season's time? You know, Xabi Alonso is probably my pick, but who would you get to replace him? Uh, Nagelsmann. If, if we still have Willow, but if we still only market Nagelsmann. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the only reason I think uh, Angelotti's completely safe this summer is the fact that there is just not much on the market available right now apart from Nagelsmann. So, yeah, I, I would agree. And then... Oh, I forgot to mention Musa Diaby. It's been really, it's been heavily linked with Real Madrid this summer. I I've said this many times. I do, I don't want Musa Diaby at Real Madrid. Not because I don't like the player. I really do like Diaby. But the problem is, I don't think he'd fit at all in La Liga. This this is a guy who relies on a lot on the pace, a lot on open space, a lot on the, just running into those open spaces and you know trying to cause threat. You're using that as well. If he's not going to have that open space in La Liga against low blocks, I think it would be a bad sort of decision to sign him because that would that would just he just wouldn't fit in with La Liga at all. He would fit in in you know let's say Newcastle were to sign him, but I just don't think it's he fits at, at La Liga. So what are your thoughts on the other before we we close out? Yeah, I think that he can improve. I think that he's still young. I think that he can improve, but I, I think that I'm I'm in agreement with you as well. I think mean, we need people who. Good, who are good, who's good with the ball at their feet and can penetrate and break down low blocks as well. So, yeah. Yeah, so that was uh, Jabari's rebuild of Real Madrid. Uh, let me go and let me know what you, what you guys thought of it in the comments below. Um, apart from that, that is it for today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.